What is going on everyone, it's the Fake Weeb here, and today we will be talking about all the new characters in the Cullen game so far. Now, some of these characters are still alive and may be important to the story later on, so it's best to know the explanation of these characters, their backgrounds, their characteristics, and how their curse technique works. Obviously, this arc is still ongoing, so I will label this video as part 1 and make a part 2 in the future once more more new characters are introduced. In part 1, we will be going over Hiromi Higaruma, Fumihiko Takaba, Ayori Hazinoki, Reggie Star, Yuro Takako, and Ryu Ishigori. There are a few characters that I'm purposely not gonna explain, like Kurorishi, Druv, and the two colony campers Yuji met at the beginning, simply because these characters don't hold too much of a significance unlike the other ones. And yeah, that being said, as always guys, before we start the breakdown, I would kindly appreciate it if you can drop a like on the video as that would help me out a ton, and consider subscribing to the channel for some more. Awesome Jujutsu Kaisen manga videos appearing in your sub feed. With all that out of the way, let's get back to the video. The first culling game player we will be going over is Hiromi Higaruma, my favorite new character in this arc so far. Higaruma was first brought up in chapter 158 when our students were searching the Kogane for someone who had 100 points in the culling games. Because Higaruma had 100 points, the plan was for Yuji and Megumi to meet Higaruma and exchange a deal into creating one of their preferred rules. In the next chapter, we actually get a full dedicated backstory to Higaruma's past. Before the Culling Games, Higaruma was originally a public defense lawyer who often took on the nearly impossible cases in order to protect the wrongfully accused criminals. His peers and co-workers referred to him as a genius. He passed the law school acceptance exam and the old legal bar exam on his first try as a young adult. One day, Higaruma was given a case that seemed near impossible to turn around. All accusations against his defendant were strong. The defendant's blood matched the same blood on a knife that was used in a nearby homicide. And when the police called him for questioning, he apparently ran away from them. However, Higaruma did end up finding some evidence to prove that the accused criminal is actually innocent, although his efforts never mattered anyway. Because of the justice system being so corrupt, they ended up calling his defendant guilty, and that's when his ideals start kicking in. Higuruma had always wondered about what's truly right and what's truly wrong. What can a just lawyer like him do when the whole court decides that whoever the defendant is, for whatever hierarchy reason, they'll always be guilty? Is it for the reason to keep up with the tradition of guilty until proven innocent, or is it to satisfy the majority in the room. Whatever it may be, even if the defendant is proven innocent, in some cases they are still guilty. And so that particular case really opened Higuruma's eyes, learning that there is no hope for those who are granted with unfairness, that the justice system is corrupted and no defense can be given. Submitting in the end, Higuruma awakens his culling game powers as he calls for a retrial. Moving on to his abilities, Higuruma is one of the modern sorcerers in the culling games. He fits in the category of players that had their brains modified for jujutsu via idol transfiguration. During his fight with Itadori, we see that he's able to summon his very own domain expansion. Now, how is this possible? Didn't Higuruma, like, just enter the culling games 12 days ago? Go. Well, back in the Shibuya incident arc, Kinjaku had remotely casted Idol Transfiguration to all modern players in the Cullen games. And that Idol Transfiguration had changed Higuruma's soul and wired his brain into that of a sorcerer. So that's why Higuruma, who's never had experience on Jujutsu before, is able to quickly learn domain expansion because he's been modified to already have the experience of Jujutsu. Think of it like suddenly 
suddenly getting a huge XP boost and then skipping many levels in a video game, making you a pro right away. Higuruma possesses a curse technique that allows him to call upon a large Shikigami named Judgment, a very similar situation to Junpei and how his transfiguration got him moon drags. Judgment has three stubbed points that act as an arm and a leg. Each arm holds a scale resembling the appearance of Lady Justice. Judgment is also linked to Higuruma's domain expansion by default. However, Higuruma's domain expansion is different from all the other domains we've seen in the past. As Master Tengen explained, Deadly Sentencing, which is the name of his domain, doesn't have the sure kill factor like Sakuna's or Mahito's. Violence is actually prohibited inside the domain, so instead, Deadly Sentencing relies on a binding vow that requires an explanation of rules. The rules of his domain work like a court trial, and the inside is a courtroom with the two opposing stands, one for the prosecutor, who is Higuruma, and one for the defendant, who is his opponent. His Shikigami acts as the trial judge, who is, like I said earlier, the embodiment of Lady Justice, so Judgment knows everything and everyone about those in court. Court. Once given the accusation, the defendant is given three choices, confession, denial, or silence. Once the defendant has spoken, the prosecutor uses the evidence to make a statement. Based on the evidence and statements, judgment then gives a verdict. If the defendant is found guilty, then they are unable to use their curse technique. However, if they do not have an innate curse technique, like Yuji for example, then the punishment changes to being un able to use or control your cursed energy. If the defendant does not confess and prove himself guilty, then he can be allowed up to two retrials. However, in certain cases, judgment can give the defendant the death penalty. Once that happens, Higuruma gains the Executioner's Sword, which is a sword that kills his opponents in one hit, technically the strongest weapon in Jujutsu Kaisen. The next character we will be covering is Fumihiko Takaba a failed comedian who was turned into a culling game player by Kinjaku via Idol Transfiguration. This means that Takaba is a modern sorcerer like Higuruma and had his brain modified into that of a sorcerer and gained a curse technique. His curse technique is called a comedian. Now I've seen a lot of misunderstandings with the comedian curse technique. People say his ability is overpowered in that it could rival Satoru Gojo, and yes, while that might be true, it's also not true at the same time. To explain the comedian's curse technique, when Takaba comes up with something that's funny in his head, it becomes a reality. For example, when he's fighting Hazanoki, one of his attacks was poking at him from behind, aka pulling the a thousand years of death move from Naruto. He was able to literally run up on Hazanoki, counter all his explosive attacks, defend defend his punches and come from behind him to poke at his rectum. Before he did that attack, he was like, hmm, wouldn't it be funny if I pulled the a thousand year death move from Naruto onto Hazanoki? And boom, he does just that. I guess when you think about it, it does sound like a pretty broken ability. But the catch is that Takaba doesn't know that he has a curse technique like this. He doesn't know the power he holds. Now, what if Takaba thought that it would be funny if he killed someone in one punch? Well, that's the thing. He can't do anything like that. You see, See, in chapter 169, Takaba says that in comedy shows, red is prohibited. Red refers to blood, as he means that his comedian curse technique can't make his opponents bleed. In other words, Takaba can't necessarily kill people. And that's true, because if we look at his points, he has zero points in the culling games, meaning he hasn't killed anyone yet. When he does that super kick to Hazanoki, we see that Hazanoki was able to get back up again like it didn't hurt. And as they continue to fight in chapter 173, despite Hazanoki being thrown around and crashing through multiple buildings, he still didn't have any serious damage on him. So now you might think that Takaba's curse technique is not so broken because he can't inflict any serious wounds onto his opponents. However, 
The same goes for Takaba. His opponents can't inflict any serious damage on him as well. When Takaba saves Megami from Hazanoki's deadly explosive attacks, we see that it didn't hurt Takaba at all. Yes, it shows him bleeding, but the blood instantly recovers from his body, since blood is taboo to his comedian curse technique. So this explains why he says zero damage, insinuating that the explosions did nothing to him at all. We get more clues in chapter 173 when Hazunoki says, seriously, what's with this guy? With how many times I've bombed him, he should be dead five times over by now. Why so little damage? And it shows the damage being his hair twirl. Again, that's why his curse technique is kind of powerful because every opponent he faces, they can't do any serious damage to him as he's basically invincible, but Takaba also can't do any serious damage to his opponents. Meaning that any fight Takaba gets into will always be a gag fight since neither party can win. So yes, in a way, it's OP, but also not OP at the same time, though I gotta give credits to the author, Gege Ekutami, for making such a well thought out curse technique like this. The next character on the list is Ayori Hazinoki, a sorcerer from the past who was incarnated by Kenjaku for the Culling Games. Hazinoki is a part of Reggie's group who all serves as the antagonist for the number one colony in Tokyo. He is an elite level sorcerer with fundamental knowledge of jujutsu and enough combat prowess to apply it in a fight. He's highly tolerant to pain, willing to frequently take apart his own eyes and teeth to provide ammunition for his curse technique. Hazanoki's curse technique is explosive flesh. He remotely detonates his own body parts and uses them as bombs. He generally does so by removing his eyes and teeth before using them as projectiles and exploding them on on command. Hazunoki also possesses reverse curse technique, a complicated technique that is mainly used to heal any wounds or injuries, so having reverse curse technique means he can easily replace his lost body parts for explosion devices. So this makes it simple for Hazunoki to constantly create bombs and barrage his targets with explosions. Reggie considers Hazunoki to be exceptionally dangerous and believes he will kill anyone who makes him angry enough to go all out. It seems like Reggie and Hazunoki were fairly close in the culling games, so when Hazunoki heard the death of Reggie through the Kogane, he loses motivation to fight Takaba and walks away. I wonder what the future holds for Hazunoki and Takaba. The next character we will be going over is Reggie Star another sorcerer from the past who was incarnated by Kenjaku for the Culling Games. Reggie was the leader of his own group and served as the main antagonist for Megumi in Tokyo Colony No. 1. Reggie was a highly intellectual and contemplative person. His overview of the Culling Games sought out its true intentions and was able to explain why he thinks that the games were just a part of an even bigger plan, that the supposed reasoning was just a facade, and that Kenjaku has a huge twist yet to be revealed. This decisive thinking by Reggie is what made him create his own group so that he can gather strong allies and prepare for whatever's to come in the end stage of the Culling Games. Despite Reggie having a lot of knowledge of the Culling Games, he states that him and Kenjaku weren't close and that he's just a spectator, an onlooker that wanted to see how all the chaos was gonna go down. His high IQ and well thought out planning is one of the things that makes him very strong. The other is his extraordinary curse technique. Reggie's curse technique is called Contract Recreation, an ability that allows him to recreate contracts using receipts. He can manifest what is written on the receipt into real life. For example, during his fight with Megumi, we see that Reggie manifests objects like a motorcycle, a set of kitchen knives, umbrellas, etc. as he has receipts of those items. This 
explains why his clothing is filled with paper receipts, so he can use them whenever in battle. He can even manifest a non-physical object. For example, one of his receipts was a purchase of a 5-star Japanese hotel. So when he manifests the receipt, his body turns into that of a body that had relaxed at a 5-star Japanese hotel. This is very useful, especially when you're low on stamina and need a refresher. The physical objects that he summons can be controlled at his own will. Example of that is him controlling the set of kitchen knives to hit Megumi. Reggie is also an extremely capable and experienced hand-to-hand -hand fighter. He briefly overpowered Megumi in a close quarter combat fight and would have finished him off if Megumi hadn't activated his domain expansion. This is not to say that Reggie is completely vulnerable to domain expansion, as he actually possesses a barrier technique called Hollow Wicker Basket, a secret technique that was a prototype to simple domains back in the day. Just like simple domain, Hollow Wicker Basket sets up a barrier around Reggie to protect him from the sure hit factor of a domain expansion. Unfortunately for Reggie though, he just had to fight the wrong opponent as Megumi's domain is a special case, where it's incomplete and acts more of a maximum technique to his 10 shadows. In other words, during his fight with Megumi, Hollow Wicker Basket could not protect Reggie from Megumi's domain because Megumi's domain is actually less of a domain itself, but more of an extension to his curse technique, and hollow wicker basket as well as simple domains can't nullify curse techniques. So all in all, it was just an unfortunate matchup, but generally speaking, Reggie is an extremely strong sorcerer for having an anti-domain technique in his arsenal. There's not a lot of sorcerers that have simple domains or anything similar, at least from what we've seen. In the end, Megumi won the battle as Reggie gave all his points to him before he bled out. The next character on our list is Yudo Takako, a sorcerer from the past who was incarnated by Kenjaku for the Cullen Games. In Yudo's first life, she was the captain of the Sun, Moon, and Star Squad, a group of assassins directly affiliated with the Fujiwara clan. The Fujiwara clan were one of the four great families that dominated Japanese politics during the Heian period. In her fight, with Yuta, we can see that Yuro holds a grudge against the Fujiwaras. Being the former captain of an assassin group that was directly affiliated with them, there might have been a problem between her and working with the Fujiwara family. In chapter 178, it was explained that her Sun, Moon, and Star Squad had wholeheartedly devoted their lives to the Fujiwaras, to the point where they were even denied a name. We then get some more lore that explains Yuro's sad past. Apparently, some Fujiwara member had used Yudo as a false victim for their doing of killing their own clan. This may have been the root cause of Yudo's narcissism. For example, Yuta is in the Cullen Games to save Gojo and restore the Jujutsu world. He's in the Cullen Games for his friend's sake as he lives for others. Yudo, on the other hand, is in the Cullen Games just for her own sake. Her supposed reasoning is just how having a second chance at life since her first life was filled with many regrets. Yuta can't understand Yudo's intentions on wanting to live only for herself. He thinks it's selfish. However, at the end of their battle, Yuro points out that it's not selfish and that Yuta is just naive because she states that the only ones who have an overwhelming sense of self, the people who disregards all others, are the ones who will transcend into a mere stronger being. She references a fully formed Sukuna when he was the king of curses back in the Heian period. So Yoro is implying that Yuta can't reach his true potential if he stays modest and shows empathy towards others. And like I said earlier, Yuro's tragic past may have been the root cause of her viewpoint on this theme. 
Moving on to her strengths, Takako is an exceptionally strong fighter by becoming one of the highest scoring players in the Culling Games. Being in the Sendai colony, her level of strength forces a deadlock between other strong sorcerers such as Druv, Kurorishi, and Ishigori. Yuro's curse technique is called Sky Manipulation. She can turn the sky into a tangible surface and use it to manipulate space. In battle, she can defend by distorting the shape of her opponent's attacks. While the surfaces she controls can't crush her opponents directly, Takako can break the surface of the sky like a thin layer of ice and hit her target with the impact. She calls that attack Thin Icebreaker. This allows her attacks to slip past her opponent's guard and generate massive destruction. It's actually such a cool move and pretty hard to defend since it's not Yudo hitting you, but Yudo hitting the surface of the sky onto you. One of the other sorcerers in the deadlock gave an inference that Yudo can also use reverse curse technique. Though we've never seen her use it, we'll just say she has reverse curse technique in her arsenal since Ishigori mentioned it. Yudo also possesses a domain expansion, however, we were not able to see that as well due to the physical implications of two other domains and the intrusion of a mighty cockroach. The last character we will be going over is Ryu Ishigori, an ancient sorcerer from 400 years ago who was incarnated by Kenjaku for the Culling Games. Ishigori is the hotshot cool type guy that enjoys a good fight and uses food as the metaphor. Despite not having any real regrets, Ryu compares his old life to being a moderate eater, leaving Ryu still unsatisfied because he's never had any dessert in his existence. He wants to use this second chance at life to find an opponent worthy of satisfying his insatiable hunger because he's never felt full before. Ryu is basically just a nagging battle lust. He craves for a good fight as his satisfaction, so when he sees Yuta Akotsu in the Sendai colony, Ishigori notices that Yuta has the potential to fulfill his hunger. Moving on to his strengths, Ishigori boasts destructive power and the highest cursed energy output among any player in the Culling Games. He was able to score 77 points in 12 days in one of the game's fiercest colonies and forced a deadlock with other exceptional sorcerers like Druv, Kurorishi, and Yuro. Ishigori's curse technique is called Cursed Energy Discharge, allowing him to take advantage of his high cursed energy output by firing cursed energy beams from his hair. During his battle with Yuta, we even see that he was able to discharge his cursed energy from his back. Ishigori mainly attacks using Granite Blast, the ability to shoot a massive widespread beam of hyper-concentrated cursed energy, packing enough devastating power to decimate several city blocks. At the end of the battle, Ryu is fully satisfied and has no issue with losing to Yuta, but chastises him for sparing both him and Yuro. Ryu immediately agrees to transfer his points over to Yuta using the newly established 10th rule, and it is assumed that both him and Yuro are going to hang out with Yuta in the Culling Games. Boom! That is all the new significant Culling Game players explained. I hope you guys enjoyed this sort of breakdown, and if you want to see some more in-depth videos of the Culling Games, then be sure to let me know down in the comment section down below. As you guys know, I do read the comment section. I mean, if I don't heart your comment, then it doesn't mean I haven't read it because I usually get notifications of new comments when I'm at work or at school and I just don't have like the time to reply. But nonetheless, guys, that's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching another one of my Jujutsu Kaisen breakdowns. It's been the fake weeb and I'm out. Peace.